Welcome back to Rendezvous Photography YouTube. So in my last video, I gave you a glimpse of a camera uh, that I am getting ready to use and I promised I'd reveal that camera uh, to you at a later video. Well, today's that video. So when I basically got into photography. I was in high school and uh, always in, excuse me, always in my car was a camera, not this camera, but one identical to it. This is the Argus uh, C3 35 millimeter camera rangefinder. You find them all over the internet. They're not very expensive, but they're good cameras. So in high school, I used that. And even after high school, I was using this camera. And I got some darn nice pictures. You know, all I, all I needed besides that was a exposure meter. That's it. And so I had that with me in my car in the back seat on the floor, usually, uh, all the time. And I got, some, I got some memorable pictures. But one summer, I, I took a... I took a solo hike in the, to the Goat Rocks Wilderness area in central Washington. I went up there. I was there for, I think, about a week. Maybe not a week, but I was there for quite some time. And I had that Argus C3 with me. And holy cow, you know, it's pretty up there. And I love that place. I've been up there several times throughout the years. But, you know, I've I seen a lot of wildlife and and a lot of pretty sunrises and sunsets and the snowy mountain peaks. And it was, it was a beautiful place. And as I was up there, I got to thinking that, you know, maybe I need another camera. Because this one is not t too versatile. I mean, I can't take wildlife pictures. And I, you know, I got to guess at the... Guess at the exposure all the time and, and everything like that. So I talked myself into buying a new camera. And then I got back. And about a week later, I went to downtown Yakima, Washington, and, and stopped in a little camera store that I frequented quite a lot back in those days. It was called um, Shepherd's Camera Store or Shepherd's something like that. But it was Shepherd's. I always called it Shepherd's. And I went in there and there was a... You know, it was kind of a busy day, and there was quite a few people in there, but there was an, well, I guess, an, I'd say an older gentleman back there behind the counter and caught my eye, and I walked over to him. I told him I was looking for a, a 35 millimeter camera, and he said, I think I've got just a thing for you. I go, okay. <laughs> so I don't know where I came up with the money to buy because I never had any money back in those days, but I did have a little money with me. So he, 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 he went under the counter and pulled out a 35 millimeter SLR. She was a beauty. She was pretty. And he said, this is what you need right here. Because I told him, you know, I wanted something interchangeable lenses and an and a SLR type one. So he pulled out this camera and, and man, I knew right away I was going to buy it. He didn't have to sell it to me too much anyway, but he told me a few of the features and and I bought it and I had that camera for years. It uh, For years I took, it was just my second hand actually, or it was just part of me is what I'm trying to say. And I loved that camera and I used it uh, for weddings. I took many weddings with that camera. I photographed many weddings and I, and then in, in 1980 or 76, my wife and I started a newspaper and that was my main camera for that uh, newspaper. I took probably thousands of photos with it during that period. It was about three years or so. And it was just as reliable as could be. And when we moved to Alaska in 1986, it came with me. But sadly, uh, I don't know, it must have been about 1990, it started breaking on me and I had to replace it. I bought a, a Nikon of some sort, but I, I love that camera. And in recent 
months, I've been thinking, you know, I need to get another one of those cameras, folks, and that's what I've done. Let me show you what I've ended up buying here just in the last uh, probably three months. You probably saw this when I held it up. It says Konica right there. Some of you guessed it was a Konica T3. You know, some of you were pretty close, but it's not. This camera came out in 19, uh, what was it, 1968 maybe. This is the Konica Auto Reflex T. This is, let me take this cover off here. Came with this nice, nice cover. I don't think I had that with my first one, but let me take this off. There you go. This is identical, nearly identical to the camera I bought there in 1969. Uh, same lens. Now I, I bought the camera body on eBay, came body only. And then I looked and looked and looked and I found this lens right here from a camera store, I think it was. And I ordered that lens, the same identical lens that I had on, on my original camera. And it, it, she's such a fine camera. Uh, let, let's, let me, let's zoom in and, and we're gonna take a closer look at it here. We'll just set her down here and then we're gonna zoom in. All right, so this is a, a basic camera. It's not anything that's like the modern cameras with all these hidden menus and whatnot. This, everything is on the external part of this camera. And it's very few compared to what you have nowadays. Very few uh, items you need to remember. So let's let's start with the top here, just real quick. And so this, of course, is your uh, film rewind button right here. Just go like that. Winds one frame at a time. This is your shutter release button. Uh, it has a a. a a fitting for your cable release, not electronic, just, excuse me, just the old fashioned cable release. Uh, this is your shutter speed dial. You use this to select what shutter speed you want to use, which is preferable. It goes, the shutter speeds go from bulb to one one thousandths of a second. And uh, to set your white, uh, I mean, your ASA, not white balance, goodness. But he said your ISO or ASA is called nowadays. You just lift this this out, outer ring of this, just lift it up and turn it, and there'll be a little window uh, right here, this window, and you just set it so that the, there's a little white spot. You set what uh, ASA you want next to that white spot. It's really easy to do. Uh, this lever right here is a lock. So if you, 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 without using lock, you can put it down to, I guess, one half second. Okay, that's what it says. If you want to go further than that, you pull this little lever back and then you can turn it to one second or bulb. But you have to pull that, this little lever right here. You need to pull it back. And here we have the, um, this is a hot shoe. This is one of the differences between this camera and my original camera. I don't believe, well, I know I didn't have a hot shoe on it. I don't know when they started putting this on, but I believe that's a hot shoe. It looks like a hot shoe, although I haven't, I haven't really verified that yet. Maybe I should do that, but I haven't yet. This is your rewind, film rewind. It's got a little lever on it. When you're finished with your roll of film, you just, there's a button on the bottom. You press that button and then turn this until your film is fully, fully rewound into the cassette. Okay, and I think that's it for the top. Let's go to this side. Uh, this would be uh, the right side from my view. So there's nothing there, just a hinge. The hinge for your, uh, your back panel and also a an eye for your strap there. Go to the, to the other side. 
and it's the same. You got the eyelet for your strap, but it also on this side is the uh, back release. It's right here. It's kind of an unusual one. It's a little lever. You just slip your fingernail in there and pull down on that, and it releases the back. And then you can open up your you can open up your back. And while we're in here, let's look at the back. So uh, you probably notice on this, this is this pressure plate is really a long one. That's really unusual. I, I think they probably designed it that way to help hold your film flat. I mean, usually they just, you know, they're just about as wide as, as your frame, your film frame, but this one isn't, it's really wide. You know, and this, it's, of course, they're advertising the right film, which you can't get any nowadays, but it doesn't matter. You put a, a full cassette in here, pull, it, pull out the leader, go across these rails and down into here. Just put the, the lead edge of the, of the leader in there. And once you do that, you just uh, push the button. Oh, and we got her on a slow shutter speed. Let me get it back here to something more. There we go. So you put your film in that, wind it once, fire the shutter and close your, close your back up. Do that twice more, fire the shutter twice more, like that, and you're all set. And when you do that, then you're gonna have, you're gonna, you're gonna see that this is on number one. So now you're ready to take your first picture. Uh, it's really basic. It's something you do with every film camera, so it's not hard to learn. Uh, this button here uh, is to release your lens to uh, put a new, to put a different lens on it, okay. You just put it in there, give it a twist and it locks. This is your self timer right here. You pull that, talk the shutter and it will time. And I believe the shutter, the mirror locks up when you do that on this camera. So uh, that's also a mirror lock up. You can use it that way. This, it, this button right here is your, uh, depth of field preview on that. I never use that, but that's what that little button does for you right there. Shows you your depth of field at whatever aperture you're set to. I think that's it except the bottom. I don't think I've showed you the bottom yet, but anyway, this is your battery check button. You push this in it, look in the viewfinder and it will tell you if your battery is dead or not. This little uh, cover here, Hold your batteries. I think I think I tried. I think three five seven or LR LR forty four. They're not the same voltage, but they would work in there. This is your uh, your a tripod socket here for your tripod. This is the button I was talking about that you depress to uh, rewind your film. As you rewind, before you can rewind the film, you have to depress this button. So you depress it and with with one hand and and then rewind the film with, like that. That's how you do it. And speaking of the ba the battery, the one thing that was wrong with this camera when I bought it and it's still wrong is that the meter does not work. Um, I've looked at it and I, I know what's wrong with it. But to fix it, the camera needs to be taken apart. And it would be a simple fix if you could take the camera apart, I think. But it's not going to be me who does that. I'm happy without a meter. I'm real happy without a meter. So, and the lens, this lens here, let's take this off. We'll take this lens off and we'll just hold that up there. So inside there's your mirror, you know, and you can see it flip up like that when you fire it. So this uh, this lens, this is your focusing ring right here. This, this is a standard lens that came with this camera. This, this is the original kit lens for the Konica Auto Reflex T. It says right here it's uh, 52 millimeter. This is the red dot that you line up with the red dot on the camera mount, on the camera. And that, that tells you when you've got your, uh, your lens set up correctly to give a little twist, okay? This is your 
uh, focusing ring and and your uh, this would be your depth of field uh, if you wanted to get by without really focusing too much but some people use that some people don't but anyway it goes from uh, 30 feet or 10 meters and then it goes to infinity and then back to uh, 15 feet and 0 0.45 meters. That's a minimum, minimum focusing uh, distance on that. That takes a 55 millimeter uh, filter. And uh, let me show you there. I don't know if you can read that or not, but there's the information on the on the lens front. So it's a good lens. A lot of people don't, you know, it's a kit lens. Why are you going to use that? Well, this is a good lens. I've always used this lens. I had one. I had the original from my first camera. I have it here still, but it doesn't seem to work too good. So I, that's why I bought this new one and it's much nicer than my old one was. The other ones kind of wore out. So to put this lens back on, you line up those red marks I was talking about right here. There's one there and there's the one on the camera right there. So you just line those up and give it a twist. From you're looking at it from the back, you twist it to your left. It's opposite of my Nikon. My Nikon goes the other way. So there you go. I uh, this I love this camera. Like I said, it's it's just a beauty, and I'm so happy that I got this. Let me let me zoom back out, and I got I got some more stories to tell you. It won't take long. Let me zoom out. So after I got this camera all set up, uh, sometime last week I got a call uh, from someone that I know, and and uh, they said they were going to have a a, benef a benefit a, a basketball benefit game or a benefit basketball game. That's what I'm trying to say. And she asked me if I'd come and take some photos of it. And I said, sure, I'd, glad, I'd be glad to. So I, uh, I thought, you know, this would be a good time to use the uh, Konica. I took some digital pictures too, some color, but I, I wanted to use this camera. So in order to do that, I needed a flash. Well, I had just happened to have the right flash here. So I set up this 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 Vivitar 283 flash. This is just like the one I used in the old days with this camera. It's <laughs> just the exact setup. So I, I what I do is I just set that on there, lock it in place, uh, bring this the PC cord around here, put it in in the uh, X sync right here, like that. Load up with some film. And this time, this time I used uh, what did I use. I used Ilford HP4 on this on these pictures that I'm going to show you here. So I went to the ball game with this, to the basketball game with this, and also a digital camera. And This is a really simple outfit to use. You don't have to worry about camera exposure. You just, with this, with the 283 flash, use this dial, this, this gauge right here, uh, this little dial right here. You turn it and figure out what f-stop you want to use and, and the shutter speed. The shutter speed has to be at 1 125th. It could be a little lower if you wanted it to, but 1 25th is the highest shutter speed you can use with this camera. You, you, you just turn, the, turn the flash on, plug in your to your X-Sync, and from that point on, folks, 
you don't have to worry about exposure. All you need to worry about is um, focus and winding your film. And believe me, after not having to wind film for many, many years, that was an easy thing to forget. I, I just had to remind myself to wind the film. Anyway, so you wind it, set it, and there it goes. That's all you need to do. It measures, it, it, uh, I guess measures the light right here and shuts and whatever it sees, it shuts the flash off at the right time to get the proper exposure. So like I said, you don't have to worry about once you have that flash set up right and learn how to use it, you just take pictures. That's all you do. So I used this, I used this camera and lens and flash and I took a few pictures at the game the other day. This, this would have been my first, well, actually, this would have been my second roll of film through this camera because I'd shot one roll just to check and make sure the seals and everything were okay, the light seals, and, you know, that everything was all right with it. So that was just a quick little shot of, little shots of anything around the property here. But this, from the pictures I'm going to show you here are from actually the first real roll of film I, I put through this camera. It was a fun game. Uh, unfortunately, my wife and I got there late because we had some difficulties getting out of the house, I guess. We had, you know, it was tax day, you know what I mean? We, we had to get our taxes in. <laughs> so anyway, we got that all taken care of. And by the time we got there, uh, ha it was halftime and we were, we were an hour late. So I, and so I started taking pictures with this camera. And like I said, we were late, so I only had about maybe 45 minutes to take pictures. I had a lot of fun. This, with this Konica, holy cow, it, I, I actually got a little emotional when I was taking pictures with it because it was such a good feeling. And I just, it just felt right, folks. It just felt good for me, and I have a, and I ha I had the same confidence in this camera and flash setup as I did, whatever it was that, fifty years ago or something like that. It was the same. I had the same confidence because I had used it and I knew what I could do with it, and it was just so natural for me to feel that way. So I'm shooting black and white film and I'm shooting from the bleachers. Now, I gotta admit, these pictures I'm showing you here, uh, the, the long distance ones that, uh, yeah, I need to practice on those, on, on the action shots. I, I wasn't really happy with those. My focus was fairly good on them, but I, uh, yeah, I need to figure out my foot, my leg is still hurting me, so I couldn't get off the bleachers very much without fear of having somebody come and pick me up. But this game was uh, the fight, the Wasilla Police Department versus uh, the Wasilla Fire Department. And it was a fun game. There was a lot of, it was just a perf just a good time game. There was, it wasn't high tension or high tension or anything. This was just a fun game, and the guys had fun, and the girls that were out there, and and I didn't know any of them, but I just felt so good about this, and and so I took a few pictures uh, during the game with with my Konica and also with a Nikon uh, DSLR. After the game, you know, there was all everyone started milling around and stuff, and so I. I went over to like the cheerleaders on each side and I, it was so natural for me to do this. It was just like, it was just like when I had the newspaper, I just, I didn't even think, hesitate. I knew what to do. It was just great. And so I went and asked the cheerleaders, you know, to pose and, and, uh, and the teams, I asked them to pose and it, it just felt good. And, and I didn't even worry about on all these pictures that I'm show that I showed you here, I took one one exposure, one shot. That was it. I'd get them grouped up, 
I would say, okay, and take the picture, and, and we'd all walk away. And I couldn't, I didn't even look at, I couldn't even look at it like we can nowadays. Although I tried, I'd always try to look at the back of my conic, and no, no, that's not right. So the pictures came up, and they, they, they came out really good. So after I was almost finished, and I thought, you know, I need a picture of both teams together. And so I, I walked up to a player. I don't know who it was or what player it was or anything. I just said, hey, could I uh, get both teams together to get a picture of this? They didn't know who I was. They didn't know who I was at all. But I said, I just need, I would like to get everybody together. And so <laughs> in, in three minutes, the whole both teams were together. They were just ready. They, I didn't try to line them up. They just did it all themselves. They just all got in a group and, and started, and they posed. And then, like I said, about three minutes. And I, I got all set up there. I wish I could have got a little further back, but I couldn't because I was up against uh, some tables and stuff. Anyway, I held the camera up. I went, they were all together. I just held my camera up, went like this. Focused a little bit, like this, and went, all right, and I waved, thanks, and everyone left, and, and that was it. I didn't worry about my exposure. I didn't worry about anything. It was so different than digital, where you have to just keep looking. It's, oh, wait, I got to do one more. That wasn't quite right. No, you just shoot it, shoot it, and leave, and that's the way it, it, it ought to be, really. Anyway, I got the negatives back, and and that picture, the last one I took of both teams together, I, I didn't even think about it. And and as we're driving home, my wife said, "Did you see that? Did you see that lady in the picture? That last one you took?" And I said, "Well, I wasn't really looking. I didn't." I mean, I wasn't looking at individual faces. I was just looking at the group. She is the mayor of Wasilla, and she is the highlight of that picture. I was when I print, when I uh, when I when I looked at the negatives. Holy cow! There's the mayor of Wasilla right there, and she's having a good time. That's the picture I printed today, and and I printed on eleven by fourteen, and it because on just regular gloss paper. And boy, it looks nice. Let me show it to you. So here is that picture. You look close to the center. You see the woman there <laughs> having so much fun. That's the mayor of Wasilla. Yep. So this picture was taken with a Konica Auto Reflex T uh, with a 52 millimeter F1.8 lens and a Vivitar 283 flash. And uh, the exposure on that was F2.8. Had the lens at F2.8, and the flash was 1 1 25th of a second. Perfect, perfect picture. Uh, in my newspaper days, in my newspaper, in my newspaper days, that picture would have been my lead picture. And even not, I worked for a while for other newspapers too. That picture there would have been selected for uh, for a prominent pay place on the newspaper because of the mayor and her exp the expression on her face. It's a beautiful picture. Okay, now I gotta say, I know some of you are looking at these pictures and saying, wow, there's, they're not very artsy or, you, you know, they're not crafted well, I guess you could say. And I, but I, I'm telling you, the, the look you're seeing there on all these pictures I showed you is what I was, as that's the look I wanted. It's, it, folks, that is 1970s newspaper photography right there. Those pictures, that's what we did. That's how they looked. Uh, we weren't worried about, you just didn't worry about being too creative. Your job was to get pictures of people 
and events. And so you went there with your camera and your flash. I'm going to talk about that one of these days, about how it was to take photographs for newspapers in the 1970s. I think that would be a good video. But you could be critical of these pictures that I showed you, but I'm telling you that's exactly the look I was after on these pictures. I, I just couldn't ask for anything better. Um, if you, if you, uh, I'm going to close this now because I've been going on for too long, but if you, if you want to see these photographs, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and still, still pictures, just click on the link below, which is my, uh, web, web, website for Smug Mug, and you'll see all these photographs where you can look at them closer if you'd like to. Also, I'm going to put on that same, uh, same group of pictures. There's going to be some of the digital ones that I did uh, for for the lady who called me, and she's going to look at these pictures too. But there will be some digital pictures there, some color ones. Anyway, I think that's it. I just want to say thanks for coming by and uh, bearing with me while I try to stumble through this. <laughs> anyway, so um, my knee is better, and I'm glad I still... Um, be real careful with it, and I still, it still hurts a little bit. Anyway, thanks for coming by, and we'll see you again next time. Thanks for coming to Rendezvous Photography. Bye.